than one of the youngest females to have graced our first parliament of the First Republic. Lucy Enin is calling for the removal of the indemnity clauses in the 1992 constitution. She says these are unnecessary bottlenecks in the constitution that must be removed. She spoke to my colleague Benjamin Akakbo. So it's another pleasant opportunity to discourse with someone really special, someone who has uh, been in this country, served in the first parliament of the first republic, that is under Osajifu Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. Uh, she's in the person of none other than Lucy Enning, who joins us uh, for a discussion. Auntie Lucy, a very good afternoon to you. Afternoon too. I hope you're well. By the grace of God, I'm well. I'm so lucky that I'm still alive and kicking. Uh, by next year, June, I'll be 82, 82. So I thank God for his blessings. Wow, 82. And you, you, you must have been really young then when you, you know, exceeded. I entered into politics from Archwater School. I didn't go to the sixth form. I left Archwater in 58. Joined the commercial bank for a while and then straight to parliament. So I was 22 years when I became a member of parliament. That is really young, even by today's standards. It's exactly. So let me ask you this. What are your reflections on today's Ghana? You, you, you were in the Ghana of the First Republic all the way till now. You served in uh, the First Republic. When you look at Ghana today, what do you see? The Ghana today, there is so much confusion. We, uh, what I say is that... Uh, Unless we change our 1992 constitution, because this constitution has so many flaws in this constitution. And this constitution was imposed on the people of Ghana after a long period of terror, reign of terror, by PNDC and DC rule. That's at, at, after the long period and people were agitating, blah, blah. That's why the constitution came to be written. So it's not the constitution for the people. It's not the, it was important, I will call it, for me, I don't mess with it, it's J.J. Rawlings constitution. You call it a Rawlings constitution? Exactly. Uh, but, but when you talk of it, are you referring to the AFRC, PNDC, or are you referring to the PNDC and the NDC? The NDC was under a democratic dispensation. No. What I'm saying, that constitution, when it was first drafted, that is 1932, and it, it legalized coups. AFRC, PNDC, uh, or coups, you know, military regimes. So when you are uh, 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 make a, a constitution, you, you have to write a constitution. Why should we legalize coup? When you say it legalizes coups, what exactly do you mean? Because they have put in so many uh, decrees, PNDC decrees, ANC decrees in the uh, uh, constitution. And then the, the worst part of it, they have put indemnity clause. And then the diversity, because I, I remember they shared this state enterprises before the coming of the constitution. And that's why they put the indemnity clause on it. So even when you take it to court, you, unless we change this constitution. But those indemnity clauses were put there for certain reasons when we're making the transition from you know, military rule to democratic rule. There, there were reasons behind you know, those indemnity clauses to ensure that we could proceed on the democratic you know, path without too much uh, you know, uh, confusion, if you like. Don't you think that was a necessary uh, condition for having what we enjoy now? I think it was, it, it was uh, that's what I'm t um, saying. The constitution came to power under rule of terror. People were very afraid for, so for years. PNDC had been ruling of Ghana for so many years. That's what the time they shared the booty. What I'm saying, because let me tell you, if you have, uh, give you a typical example. The Sawam Canary is a state enterprise. GNTC, state enterprise. State Fishing Corporation, all this that belongs to the, even P, uh, TV3, which used to be uh, Ghana film industry. That's where and others that they started being trained. Why should you take state property 
who owns it, how much. It's not right. To me, if you, you, you and then you cover it with indemnity clause so that I, Luciani, cannot take it to court. Are there specific matters that you would have wanted to take to court, matters that you might have had against the AFRC, against the PNDC? Do you feel aggrieved in any way? That's what I'm saying. We shouldn't legalize coup if we are talking about civilian government. We need to change this constitu present constitution, which has made it, people have taken advantage and taking all the state enterprises, the state footwear, the state fishing corporation, and some woman can all the, we used to have uh, what we call GNTC stores, chain of stores, which Nkrumah uh, purchased when he wanted to uh, sell made in Ghana goods, a Ghana house, we're selling made in Ghana goods. And if you go to Tema Fishing Corporation, it was state owned, everything was state owned. In fact, during the time that we were practicing uh, uh, this thing, this fee-free education started by Nkroma. It was fee-free and compulsory at, at, at that time. You see, so if we really are sincere and we want to change into, uh, we need to, because Rawlings and his clues made this constitution just to cover because if you go to uh, uh, the, th the list that, th this is just an iceberg, oh. there are a lot of things that uh, belong to the state. So let, let, let me just chip in this bit. We know that when it comes to state enterprises and all of that, after Nkrumah was ousted right from Buzia through to others that came, a lot of them, the canneries, the, the leather processing, the shoe processing, the tomato paste processing, the glass industry, all of that that was set up by him, they became, a lot of them became defunct through no, no. Uh, it, it wasn't, I mean, it was from stage to stage, but they died along. It wasn't the AFRC that came and started the process. It wasn't the PNDC that came and started the process. A champon said, a champon said he wasn't going to borrow, but the state enterprise were still running, were still having fishing cooperation, all this running. He said he wasn't going to borrow so he made a, 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 a they call it entry, and he lines the operation feed yourself. And the operation feed yourself was so valuable that we were exporting rice to our neighboring countries. So when the PNDC came, they shared the booty. How? What, what exactly happened? That's why they passed the diversity implementation program. The diversity implementation program, if we and, and it's entrenched in the constitution. They legalized it. After, the, after they shared the booty, then coming to write the constitution, they legalized it. That's what I said. We need to change our constitution. Otherwise, Ghana will never move on. Okay. Talking about changing the constitution, this is the same constitution that has served us in the Fourth Republic, I mean, for some, what, close to 30 years, 1992 uh, till now. So some 28 years. And just because you bring it up i recall and through my readings justice a uh, fk annan back then you know who was part of th this entire discussion on framing a new constitution talking about the benefits of it you know and all of that i remember that um, you know ordinary people common folk fisher folk farmers and all of that were brought in to contribute their thoughts to what our constitution should be so in effect it was ghanaians to a large extent determining what they wanted. Are you suggesting that because of the indemnity clauses in there, we have to change the entire constitution that we put together for ourselves? I'm telling you, they have this, as I told you, the Constitutional uh, Review Committee, which was set up under uh, 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 Atabels in 2011. 2010. They have identified so many things that we have to change. And indemnity clause is one of those big things. And then the diversity, which has killed Ghana. The diversity implementation program has really killed Ghana. Because if we had allowed all these things to operate, now do you know where, who owns these things? Look at all the catering rest houses all over the country. The owners. How they were done. It's all state. Because one thing you have to notice that this thing was passed under terror. 
I'm not kidding. At that time, it was scary to live around that time. Which time specifically are you referring to? AAFRCP and DC. It was a time of terror, a rule of terror. For me, I don't mean sweat. And they just handpicked people to make this constitution. My, even after that, and they've been, we've been implementing this constitution for years, which is no good for the country. Right. Because if you and I, if you, who and I, if the Islam country is there, and Islam people will have opportunity to work in their family. Because let's see, when the, uh, we started planning from Islam country, hmm? London, that was the first time people were having products from Ghana. We started long ago in uh, uh, Islam country. We were doing our own thing. We were able to export to other neighboring countries, if they jump for time. And look at fishing corporation. We used to have 29 fishing trawlers, not a fishing admiral motors. And they have employed people from Elubu to Kita. Our old fishermen were working on the fishing trawlers. Now, you, what, what, what are we talking about? Our fishing folk, what are they doing? And now they give them admiral motors. And then the foreign uh, trawlers are now fishing in uh, territorial waters. Yes, so we can talk about even the Black Star Line and moving on. But, 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 but the point to be made is some as well have survived. The Commander Sugar Factory, for example, I mean, there have been attempts to revamp it and all of that. Some of them have, you know, continued to serve as state-owned uh, enterprises. And, and so the focus is... Which was making profit. GNTC started making... I remember... I was part of the delegation when Nkrumah was initiating with A.G. Leventis to buy A.G. Leventis property, that is GNTC stores. It was the first enterprise that was making profit because workers were allowed to have passbooks at GNTC stores where they can credit things. Workers could go there if you are a Kosumbuk, a Kasanoma, you just go there, fail your year through either to your uh, TUC. This is made properly, mainly for uh, 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 the folk, the, the, the uh, Ghanaians. And where, how should such a thing that was making profit be divested? Now, let me ask you, you recently, you know, came out with this. You congratulate uh, the president, Nanado Dankwe Kufuado, for uh, his victory in the just ended elections. You also talk about a number of things, but apart from the AFRC and the PNDC, one of the things you mentioned in there has to do with, uh, you know, uh, the pillage of state resources. And that is part of what we are getting into now. But what exactly can we do about that in the constitution? When you, uh, you mean the constitution? Yes. We need, the, now we have produced more lawyers than ever who have studied, and we need a constitution who will suit Africans for our own benefit. We the current one doesn't? No, no, it doesn't. Because if you divest something and you tell it to a foreigner, do, do you help your country? It doesn't help. Let me ask you this, especially because we're talking about the P, uh, AFRC PNDC mm -hmm. era. How do you feel about deceased former President Rawlings? Did you have any personal encounters with him? Did he, do you feel aggrieved in any way personally with anything he may have done? First of all, I was in Ashmoter School. I left Ashmoter 58 when I was in Parliament. I think he entered Ashmoter 60. I feel so sad because I met, I have contact with Champa, Efrisa, and all the group. I've, Amedome was only a year behind me in Archimoto School. He was a Navy commander. And I know all of them. I feel so sad that the people who lost their lives during that period, not only Army uh, uh, officers, so, but civilians, which is uncalled for. How? When you said, look, if you talk about revolution, compare with Fidel Castro, 
Fidel Castro came from a very, very rich family. But I don't think Fidel Castro had to make mansions and everything for himself. Never. If you go to Cuba, I don't think they, he did it. So it means you came not because of Ghanaians, not because of benefit of Ghanaians, because of your own selfish benefit. That's why you came. Okay, so that's that's how you feel about that. I, I, I did spend a year in Cuba uh, studying, and I can tell you that the Cubans have their own problems when it comes to these, from Che Guevara to, you know, Fidel. But I understand the point you're making. I acquired straight properties for himself. He didn't. I know Castro never acquired property, you see. And if you go to Lenin, I've been to Moscow before, Leningrad, if you go to Lenin, uh, Leningrad now. I don't think the so-called revolutionaries, look at the, the I, it's unfortunate that I didn't bring a copy of a, when, uh, during Rawlings' 70th birthday, one of the generals, Oda, Odo, he wrote an article. I have a copy, and um, unfortunately, I will let you have the copy. Even the, the, the generals, the senior officers who were beaten and it were not recorded it unless you were in the army. You see, there are so many things that you see. What I'm saying that Ghanaians, as the uh, maybe 80 percent Christians or seven, we need to tell the truth because what I've noticed that are you we don't know anything about guys, they have suppressed the truth for a long time. Cain killed Abel, his brother. Uh, even the gospel, uh, Saint. Um, uh, Paul, so he supported Madrid, but when he said, but everything they reported bad kings, they reported good kings, everything that if, if we are Christians and we follow Christ, we don't have to cover. Right. Let, let, let me ask you this. Uh, you've spoken extensively about the AFRC, the PNDC, and you have very grave, you know, issues to discuss on them. The man at the center of both is now deceased. Uh, he actually, you know, you've said a lot of not so pleasant things. Do you have anything pleasant to say about the man? I mean, there is no one who is all black. Uh, it's said that usually you would have black, you would have white. Do you, is there anything that Rawlings, the former president did that for that you could commend him? Uh, what I am uh, I'm saying for me, I don't hide my feeling. So far as the state is concerned, there's nothing that I have to because i remember the days when people in the uh, 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 mining area were beating severely mercilessly you what i'm saying i passed through all the coups and uh, if no no brigadier brigadier no no mensa it was he whom i wanted to i went to him to because it was very scary it was very scary at that time, you see. It was very, very scary at that time. And this fear had been planted in the minds of Ghanaians. So Ghanaians are still afraid. As I'm talking, people say, Lucy, but for me, God is my protector. For me, apart from God. Let me ask you the question in a different way. Do you have any fond memories at all of the deceased former President Rawlings, who will be buried? Well, now the date has been moved from the 23rd because of some uh, family disputes about traditions and all of that. But do you have any fond memories of him? Because, you see, what I'm telling you, if what a champion did had been recorded, let me give you a few examples during a champion time. Teshinungwa Estates, uh, Dansoma Estate, Barakasi Dump, we, uh, uh, no, not we, Tono irrigation scheme, when they were, they went to mechanize that were all under. Uh, uh, uh. And uh, even though he didn't get any loan from, we were still operating all these things. If you, at that time, food complex, fishing corporation was still running. People were going to buy there. The fishing trawlers were still there. Why? Now, if you go to fishing corporation, as I'm talking, it's all foreigners. They have taken everything from us. So, what do I? What? 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 So there's nothing to commend. Let's let let me ask you this. You served in the first 
Parliament of the First Republic. Yes. You were one of ten uh, yes. women yes. Member, yes. members of Parliament, yes. and you were, you know, specifically from representing the Brongahafu region. Brongahafu. Right. Region. The whole region. Uh, right. Every corner of Brongahafu. Uh, if you could just yes. repeat. That. During recess, you have to go with. Uh, at that time, we were working as a team, teamwork, because. No, there was no day nursery, nothing. And we had just started, you know, building schools, colleges. You know, uh, there's uh, education trust schools. They put up uh, teacher training colleges and then secondary school, uh, like uh, Sunya Secondary School, Sunya Polytechnic. There, were, there was none like that in existence. So we started, and you, uh, let, uh, those days, we used to force people to go to school. At, I remember at Tebubu. The, T, the DC, myself, and the, we have to force people to go to school because people were not going to school at that time. Even in Ash Motor School, in my class, there were only 13 women in my class. Class of, uh, uh, that is, we left at 58. So it was quite, you know, an achievement then for the 10 of you to make it. But uh, what do you make of the workings of parliament today compared in the, in the seventh parliament of the fourth republic? We are entering the eighth parliament compared to the first parliament of the first republic. I, I, first of all, I used to go and listen to the debate, but you see, uh, I felt it was boring at times when you go, you don't even see people around, they just come and then... So. Are you referring to the current parliament or the, the first republic? I used to go and watch that because if you have a Hansard, especially 1995 Hansard, 1955 Hansard, you see how people sit down and uh, uh, apparently, in Krumah's uh, regime, there were about 80% teachers. Say, you know how teachers work to get a, a, a presentation, it's, 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 it's marvelous. But now, even when you get this, and this I think, as, I look as if we are not even reading. Do you think the standards have fallen in our parliament? Not, it's, it, it's falling. But already they made the laws, the 1966, they, they've already all. It just to make, I mean, you have to put your input, your, your, so you have to research. Now you have all the things to, for research. Why don't we research history and bring it back? But, but our parliamentarians do that. They, they have assistants, people who help them in their work and that, all of that. At that time, we didn't have secretaries. We have to do everything by ourselves. And so you feel maybe now they've been pampered and so they are not doing the work? Sure. Sure. Let's, we'll soon be entering the eighth parliament of the fourth um, republic and it's going to be a very tight one. I think only the Liman administration comes close in terms of, you know, a parliament that would be like this because we have 137 seats, at least for now, what we know, 137 seats for the NDC, 137 for the MPP and the independent candidate from uh, for Mena. Do you feel this is going to hamper uh, parliaments work in any way or is it rather going to help build our democratic credentials? We are going to see. We haven't come to see that. So we know we wait to see, wait and see what is going to happen in parliament. But as it is neck and neck like this, what do you foresee as a former member of parliament? Maybe it's history. This neck and neck, maybe Juan Kuma said we have what have we need to have uh, uh, one state, and I don't think it was wrong because Mumudu Baumia's father was a minister of local government in the one party state. So I don't think uh, 191960 constitution was all that bad. They should study that and pick what is the re to, to uh, uh, you know, time changes. I think they have to read the 191962 very well and then see what can be done about it. As we get ready to wrap up now, like I said in this statement, you congratulate uh, the president, Nanado Dankwa Ekufuado. In the next four years, uh, you know, barring any unforeseen circumstances, because, you know, you know, the opposition is also getting ready to go to court on over a number of matters. But in the next four years, what would you like to see from this administration? What would you like to see happen in Ghana? What I want to see from this administration you see, we have to go back to the drawing board. The good old days where Ghanaians are proud of themselves. They should stop copycats. They should stop what? Copycats, we've copied too much. 
Now people have even stopped eating their own food. You see, the healthy food that we used to eat, they have stopped eating. So how do we revive that? How, how do we own who we are and what, what we have? Teach our children and grandchildren. You see, Nkrumah had what we call young pioneer. When he established the young pioneer, people did not understand it. They, we, we know where we go to Britain, Europe, Russia, they all have young people being trained. So when you are a young pioneer, first your loyalty is to the state. You don't sell your state conscience if we have, some said that was propaganda uh, uh, when we if we have if you go to russia or america any part of the world they have their youth being trained so even by the time you get to a, a certain stage they know that you are going to be an engineer so they push you where you have to see this is what we should have done continue we you see we have lost so many things because you see God gave vision to visionary leaders. And Kwame Nkrumah was one of those people. He was a man of vision. Since Nkrumah, have we had any other leaders you would call visionary? I don't think so. So, because so far as we sit down, even um, 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 we are becoming copycats. Everything that is white is what we believe in it. Even when we started the Mampong, uh, her bad thing. We should have continued and research so that even the who knows that uh, this coronavirus could be uh, saved. We could be saved by our own helps. And we God has blessed us with all the helps under the sun. Look, it, now nobody knows. This is the rich set. So we we'll just sit down and let research from every time research coming from. We have scientists. We have. We produce enough people to go in and research for the benefit of Africa in Africa. Africa, we need to have this uh, colonial mentality washed from our face. Right. Now, I can't let go of you without bringing this up, especially as you were in that first parliament of the first republic. We've had, uh, you know, a historic number of members of parliament in this administration, about 120 plus of them. And some have said for a country like ours, we don't need so many. What is your take on that? Exactly. If, to, let me, if I was representing Brunhafo all by myself as a woman MP at that time, I, every ex uh, recess I uh, have to go with the regional minister, the district. Why should we have so many? Look at uh, uh, Dutch, the Dutch. How many parliamentarians do we have in Dutch parliament? We, we are just wasting our money for nothing. I don't think we have to create all these aids and call for. At least the most should be 200. The most should be? 200. Uh, so we, we actually have over 120. So if you say 200, you're adding some 80 uh, to it. Do you mean 20? No, I mean, how many? I mean, the overall number of members. How, how, how the number of parliament? I was talking about ministers. Minister, hey, hey, for what? So the ministers of state. I will send you a copy of the cabinet, Kwame Nkrumah's first cabinet. Who should we, it's uncalled for. They are just, for me, I don't see minister of communication alone will have, no. It's, it's a waste of our money. Right. So the ministers, if you had your way, how many do you think we, should, we could have? They should go in the books and see how, and then compare. If even the population, ha, uh, uh, we don't need all these ministers. Okay, and the members of parliament as well, from 275, you think we can come down to 200, though our population is growing and all of that? Because if you look at the north, the population, such a small place, and they have, um, how many people are there? And excuse me, how many people are even educated can read it there? It's the offense that but, but nowadays there are many more people who who coming I'm from that portion of the country who are the the population doesn't even necessitate uh, uh, MP. Mm. Why can't we come? You see, we are a small country like Dutch uh, Holland. They have everything, Dutch airline. They are blah 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 blah. We don't have all these things, so we need to cut down. We need to minimize cut. Our coat according to our cloth period. 
So let's downsize. Finally, uh, especially as we're in the festive season, uh, I'd like you to share your Christmas message with all of Ghana. You've been with us for a long while, 82 years now, first parliament of the first republic. You saw, I mean, you've seen all of our leaders from Nkrumah uh, till now. All the military leaders, Champo, Kufu, uh, I met all of them. What would be your message to Ghanaians during this festive season? Oh, we need to thank God. As we are Christians, we need that God has blessed. It's one of the most blessed countries in the world. So we need to give our thanks to God. For me, your trust should be in God, period. Ghanaians, they shouldn't they worship God that they should be straight with God so that God will give us all the blessings. I think it's safe to call you an 82-year-old walking history book. Walking history? Yes. God is so good to me. And we pray for many more years uh, for you. Uh, with good health and, and uh, to do my gardening, do my, as I do my gardening, to exercise a little. Right. And thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Not all people like to see old women. <laughs> Not all people like to talk to old women. Nowadays, they don't care about us. Well, some of us do, and multimedia God definitely God has time for everybody. You. My son, God bless you. How old are you? Well, that's something I would rather not disclose. <laughs> Please let me know. My, my, one of my grandsons. I would rather not. I'll tell you off air. My firstborn was 62. Right. 62. Well, I can, I can definitely tell you that I am not in his league. But you look so young like one of my uh, grandsons. I have eight grandsons. Wow. Uh, 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 and two, I have ten grand, uh, grandchildren, two girls and eight boys. You know, you are a blessing. Oh. Thank you. Thank you so much. And may God bless you all for listening to old lady. We thank you for coming. Uh, that is uh, Madam Lucy Enin, uh, who actually was in the first parliament of the First Republic under Osage for Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. She's been sharing her thoughts. She came out with this um, statement in recent times, congratulating uh, His Excellency the President, but also making some very important points about our constitution. And she feels it must go. Well, thank you for joining us as we have shared our thoughts.